I am a biogeochemist by background, and I did a lot of work in the 1980s um, and the late 70s on the <clears throat> release of greenhouse gases from soils and different ecosystems and looking at the effects of human activity on them, and uh, found many interesting things. But the gist of our conclusion was the recognition that we're managing these ecosystems in a way that's running down their carbon content and their ability to cycle CO2 out of the atmosphere. And we recognized that it was really critical <clears throat> if we were to solve the global climate change issue to find ways to manage forests to be more productive in the sense of taking more CO2 out of the atmosphere and storing it in the soils, because the soils are really the major reservoir of carbon that we can possibly manage, and they've been essentially ignored in the climate change discussion, unfortunately. So um, <clears throat> what we have realized is that in order to grow things faster, obviously we have to supply the minerals and essential elements that are needed for their growth, and commercial fertilizers don't really do it. They, they basically overcharge them with a, a handful of the elements they need, and they do it in soil form, so it's quickly washed out and it becomes contamination and pollution for ecosystems downstream without actually growing much of the crops. They're used very inefficiently and they're not, if you will, balanced for the actual needs of the plants. And that's where, you know, rock dust is what plants grow in. Plants naturally grow in by weathering the minerals in the soil. Um, they contain elements that the plants extract by releasing CO2, organic acids, and various things. And so that's the natural process of soil formation. So we need to accelerate that a great deal by essentially providing fresh minerals. I mean, a lot of ecosystems, they are unable to grow fast simply because they don't have access to fresh rock dust. And the best stuff is fresh minerals, fresh rocks of various kinds, and, um, and small size so that they, there's a lot of surface area and the plant roots can get to them easily. Now, of course, every rock type has a different chemical composition because there are different minerals in it. Every plant has a different set of elements that they need, and every soil type, because it's originated from the weathering of minerals is missing many things that have been leached out over the course of geological time. So, so you know, finding the right balance is, is a matter of optimizing both the rock dust you add, what the plant needs, and what's in the soil, and of course affected by climate too. So it's a, it's a complicated process and obviously one answer doesn't meet all. But the beauty of rock dust is that they have a wide suite of elements and that they release them slowly and continually in a way that's balanced for the needs of the plant. We, we have to find ways to optimize that, and it's going to be very site-specific. Now, the other thing that we realized um, working in the Amazon was that um, the Amazonian Indians developed the method of producing what we now call biochar. They invented that thousands of years ago when they made some of the most fertile soils in the world. And um, the biochar is elemental carbon charcoal mixed into the ground. It's not a fertilizer as such, but what it does do is it retains water and it retains the other elements that are added to the soil. So therefore, it's, it's the perfect vehicle to hold it. And what's more exciting is it's a permanent storage of carbon. So if we're making that, if we're, we're using rock powder, say, to grow trees more quickly, they're pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere, they're weathering rocks more quickly. That's a carbon sink all by itself, too. But then if we now convert that greater productivity into biochar and put that back into the soil, we're retaining more of those elements, we're making forests grow faster, making agriculture be more productive. And we can actually do that in a way that removes CO2 from the atmosphere. It's the only method we know that can be, can be done. And this is a critical need now because we have runaway climate change and we have to do something about it. So uh, from my point of view, I think um, what's needed is really a systematic research effort to combine the benefits of rock dust with biochar. And there are other things that might need to be added because uh, we might have things that are not present in particular rock dust. Nitrogen, for instance, is something that's not generally found in many rock dusts and it's low in soil. So they're organic composts and so forth. So they're, they're very exciting possibilities and it's not only that exciting, it's extremely important to increase more productivity and solve the climate change problem and produce clean energy that you can do with biochar. So what we, we need really a systematic focused effort on this that combines all these things together could in many habitats, mm -hmm. I might add, yes. Could you describe uh, the, well, the first way you came to work with rock powders yourself, the study in Panama? I'm of Panamanian background and I, I happened 
um, to visit a cousin of mine who opened a basalt rock quarry. He, he was simply setting up there, grinding it up to produce gravel and powder. And uh, I was there at the opening of it. I had, just happened to be passing passing by at the time. And uh, and what we found was that they had sort of as mitigation for clearing the land and uh, excavating it. They had planted trees all around the periphery of the property. And um, what we realized in looking at it is that there were very distinct soil types. A large number of those trees were planted directly in the rock dust from the quarry because in grinding up the gravel there's a whole pile of dust. And normally that's a free good. They can't sell that. Normally they, they just sit, it sits around. And so um, some of the trees were planted in that. Some were planted in the local soils, and they're, they're some of the worst soils in Panama. They're very leached of nutrients. It's, it's, you're, you're unable to grow anything, really, in that, that soil, so it's extremely poor. So we had that immediate contrast, and we also had an intervening, an intermediate population, if you will, of trees that were growing the local soils, but where the roots could reach the natural basalt outcrop. So we run up with three populations, and so we, we saw it as a tremendous opportunity. I, I'd been excited by rock dust for many, many years, but never had a chance to work with it. And we saw this was a natural experiment in which we could simply follow the trees. We didn't have much time or any funding for this, so we simply filmed locations with people standing them, and we knew how tall they were, and uh, we used them as rulers, essentially, to measure the heights of the trees from images. So it was very simple. And then we did some work on the chemistry of the soils with the, Na the Panamanian Natural Agricultural Lab. Um, and the results were extremely exciting. Um, you know, we got more than twice, they grew more than twice as tall, and uh, since we know the regression between the height and the weight of the tree from work that's been done in other places nearby, next door in Colombia, we're able to figure out how, what the biomass of the tree is. It's about eight times greater with the rock dust than it was in the local soils. It was not a small difference. It was a very large one. And there was nothing else added. There was no biochar added, no, no nitrogen, no compost, uh, anything else. So we realized that potentially one could get much better results, we thought, if we had biochar and say we were able to add a source of nitrogen. These were nitrogen-fixing trees, mind you, so nitrogen was not that important in the system. But uh, from our chemical analyses, we were able to determine a large suite of essential elements for plant growth that the basalt provided. And that was very neat. So we want to see that done on a larger scale. I was surprised, you know, I'd been interested in rock dust. I'd looked at your website for remineralizing the earth, and I hadn't seen really discussions of the long-term impacts on trees in the tropics, for instance, and that was something I thought was important. Mm -hmm.